let us begin. So, my name is Sam Reza. I'm part of EMBS, and I'm generally the resident MATLAB person for the department, I suppose. And I was asked to create a series of MATLAB workshop videos to help expand your knowledge on MATLAB related things. And the first one is how to make GUIs in MATLAB, uh, specifically on using what's called App Designer for it. So first, let me just sort of spruce up what you can expect. So here's an example of a GUI I made um, for Dr. Sukius's lab, um, and um, an example of a cell model for his vascular endothelial cell model. So you can see we have pictures, graphs, plotting various potassium, sodium, calcium, ion concentrations, voltages, and you can control various parameters, plot, reset, load parameters, whatever. So this is an example of a GUI that you could make. And in fact, this was made in App Designer, which I'm gonna to introduce to you today. Here's one I made for the BME 2740 course. So this is an example of a Hodgkin Huxley action potential. And you can see how, as you move this little slider down here, you can change the injection current. And that uh, results in a change in the voltage. And once you pass a certain activation threshold, you see the cascade effect occur. And you can change the capacitance of the cell, conductance, the reverse potential for each ion, the length of simulation time, and whatever else you want. Another one that I made is one for a parasite cell. And in this case, you can see how changing the extracellular concentration and non-epinephrine stimulation affects the various concentrations and potentials in the cell. Here's one I made for an honors course, IDH 2004, uh, color blindness physics project. So the whole idea of this little GUI was um, it takes an uh, example image and using some information I found from a paper, it tries to um, change the way the colors are in the image such that a person with uh, deuteropia, um, uh, I believe that's red green color blindness, will be better able to see the picture. So in this case, you have the original image, which has red, uh, green leaves and red berries or whatever. And then the patient might see this as mostly just a bunch of green. And based off the algorithm from the paper, you adjust the image and the output now shifts all the colors so that now the patient should be able to identify what's the berries in the image and what's the leaves in the image on their personal color spectrum. And this was all built inside of a GUI as well. And then here's probably the most complicated GUI I ever designed which is a camera motor control device, which I did for my senior design project. So in this case, you can control um, this camera and this motor stage attached to it using these little slider buttons here and micrometers. And the camera basically records as it slides around. And yeah, this was also designed entirely in App Designer with MATLAB. So First off, if you haven't already, make sure you get MATLAB. If you're an FI student, it's completely free. There's a reason why you shouldn't be able to get it. Just go to gofiu.edu MATLAB, log in with your FIU username password. You also have to create a MathWorks account, but it's free, but you get access to all the toolboxes, and it's a perpetual license. So as long as you're uh, um, doing it for academic reasons, it's completely fine to use. Now, why GUIs? Why even bother making GUIs? Why not just hard code everything? So the idea is that it's portable. So um, if it's portable, they can directly open it in MATLAB. You can install it as a MATLAB package. And in that case, it can be accessed uh, using one of the tabs across MATLAB. And um, you can also have it installed as an external EXE. And this is handy because now you can give it to somebody who doesn't have MATLAB and they can run the GUI you designed on their own computer without ever having uh, to install or get MATLAB. Um, so very portable in this regard. Another thing is it's very more user friendly, essentially. So oftentimes if you have some complicated thing that you're designing and you wanna share it with somebody, you don't want them to necessarily try to go through the weeds of your code to figure out how it works. You just want them to see, okay, there's a bunch of background code in this, but all you really care about are changing this value, this value, this value. So it reduces the amount of visible code that the user has to see to only those things that really matter for um, immediate results. And this leads into the next uh, purpose of why you want to use GUIs, which is interdisciplinary. Not everybody is a programmer. And actually, nowadays, it's um, you can't 
uh, be expected to do everything. So a lot of times you have to collaborate with different departments. And um, an easy way to uh, make collaboration easy is you just take away the aspect that um, is hindering communication between you. So if you know a lot of programming and you make this GUI, you can give it to somebody who's in a different department who might not know MATLAB or may not, um, even if they do know programming, they might not have access to MATLAB to understand how the programming language works that you can just give them this GUI, they can use it, and then they can, you can discuss the results, which is what really matters. So you see examples here that MATLAB has. So um, top one is a microplate plot showing different concentrations. So I guess that's one way you could use it. You have patient data visualization, you have drug interaction modeling to figure out the um, best um, combination of parameters to give to a patient. Very interesting. So next thing I need to bring up is if you ever go to Google and type in, oh, how code uh, GUI in MATLAB or whatever, 80% of the results you'll find are on what's called guide, which is an older version of how you design GUIs in MATLAB. And the newer version that they're trying to push for ever since I believe they introduced this in 2018 or 2017, I forget, is called App Designer. It does the exact same thing as guide, but it's updated to look nicer, cleaner, and easier to handle, as you can see by the outdated way guide looks like and the more cleaner way App Designer looks like. Now you can certainly still use guide, but it's way more heavy on the programming and um, it, you're just gonna have a more difficult time getting used to it in my experience. So just wanted to bring that up. So before I continue, any questions? Well, yeah, one thing I need to mention, um, you guys are, most of you are juniors or sophomores. You're gonna be using GUIs in medical instrumentation, I believe designing a GUI for an application based on the materials that the Dr. Ramella, Jessica Ramella gives you. Roman Ramella, yeah. Is there something to show up in the chat? I can't see it. Yes, uh, just a question about GUIs, that we're gonna be calling over GUIs, which we are. All right. So I tried to figure out how to best introduce this topic that sort of goes over many different things of GUIs to, that you might run into. And I decided, okay, what if we try to make a signal combiner? Because in combining a signal, you're gonna need to know how to use buttons, sliders, maybe like a drop down menu for a list and something and natural plotting. So the standard uh, equation for a signal is a cos two pi, FT plus some noise plus some DC signal. So you have, if you have a signal um, from the central line to the peak, that's your amplitude. Um, whenever the, serial, uh, the signal repeats, you have your period. Frequency is just one over the period. Um, and in the formula, A is your amplitude, cosine for the, so for the sinusoidal shape for it, two pi times your frequency times time. You can add some generic noise to it, and you can add the DC offset if you like. So all these little components we're gonna make, and then we're gonna see how we can combine signals together and see results. So might as well now show you how App Designer looks like. So if you just um, open up MATLAB and you're on the command window, and you just type in App Designer, that is it. This should open up. And if you're new to App Designer, they'll say, oh, do you wanna do a three minute tutorial? You can go ahead and do that. They also have examples of various types of uh, pre-done programs that you can take a look at. And they also have examples of, oh, maybe you're interested in how to analyze an image. Here's the pre-made GUI that lets you see how to do that. Maybe you want to design multiple GUIs, query website data, creating tables inside of them, uh, configuring a timer to do something on a specific time, whatever. But we're just gonna go a bit dangerous now and just make a blank app. And we are now in a blank app. So. Let me explain sort of the general view of it. On the left, you have your component library. Every access button, drop down menu, label thing that you want, an instrument device is in this component thing. And if you want to add it to your program, which is in the center, you literally just drag and place. Drag, place, drag, place, drag, place. Let me just go ahead and delete this. And 
for our purposes, um, you are only going to be using a couple of these, but the general gist is each of these little components you can edit in any number of uh, ways you can imagine. So that's the component library. Um, over here, you in the center, you have your design view. If you click this little draggable thing here, this is your main window, and you can control the color of the background, the state of the window when you first start it, the position on screen, if it resizes or not, or even if you want to allow resizing. Um, you can also make it so it's scrollable or not, a bunch of different parameters you can control. And then over here in the code view, this is the actual code that is uh, in that is behind your, your GUI. And if you notice, it's all gray right now and you can't actually edit anything. So this is one of the, uh, depending on who you ask, advantages or disadvantages of App Designer. App Designer tries to streamline the GUI creation uh, protocol such that you you can only edit that which you really should be editing and not edit that which you have no business of editing. So all of these things here are just stuff that MATLAB needs to make the app, but it's not needed um, for you to really do any major functions in the app. So that's why it's all gray. But if I, for example, put a button here in the center and I go to the code here, you can see right now, it, this just got added, create button. And let's say I wanna have something happen when I click this button, then I need to do what's called a callback. So if I right click this, go here to callback, add push button function callback. And now you can see here, out of all this gray code, we have one little line of white space. This white space indicates that you can actually type and do stuff here. And uh, as the code says, um, button push um, app uh, comma event, meaning when you press this button, whatever you have in this little white space will run. That's the gist of the uh, programming in uh, the GUI. Now, before I get too deep into the programming part, let's first go over some of these uh, designing features here. And the best way to go over designing features is first do a quick sketch on how you want your program to look like. So let me go back to PowerPoint. So in my mind, here's how it's gonna look like. You have your main plot window here. That's gonna show you your signal one and signal two and um, how they're combined together. You have parameters for signal one on the left here, parameters for signal two. Then you have a little drop down menu perhaps that lets you either add signal one, signal two, subtract them, or modulate, which is just a fancy word for multiply. And then uh, signal duration, so how long do you want both signals to be? And in this case, we're assuming they're both the same length, otherwise you can't really add them together because they're different. And then a nice little plot button. So um, now that we had this little sketch that um, based off how we want to do it, we can now literally start dragging and dropping things into our little window and see what we need and what we don't need. So let me go ahead and move this to the screen here. All right. So um, let's maybe give us a little bit more real estate. Maybe this is enough, we'll see. Let's first drag our axis, which is what we're gonna to use to plot things with. And maybe put it this much. We'll see if this is enough. Um, next thing, we're gonna need a label. So maybe a label right here for signal one. Label right about here. And if you notice, uh, a lot of things just automatically start aligning themselves, which is based off of uh, what's shown here. So um, how things are grouped and spaced together. But first let me put all the different components and then I'll go over how you can align and arrange stuff. So we have our two labels here. Now we need uh, fields to edit. So you have two different types of fields. We want to put in fields that we can put numbers into. So we want the edit field numeric for numeric data. Don't be confused and accidentally put a text field instead because that creates uh, strings and characters. We want actual numbers. So one here, another there, another there, and then repeat it again over here. Maybe move this. Over here. Another, another. All right. And 
now we want to do a little drop down menu. So let me see here, drop down. There we go. And another um, numeric. All right. And then a little button down here for plotting. All right. So first, how do we orientate and set up everything? So let's say we first want to align all these together. So if you highlight all these by dragging and selecting, you can align them left, center, right, however you want them in the center. You probably don't want to do that. So let's just say we want to align them all to the left. That's fine. And now they're all nice and straight. Let's do the same for this. Align them to the left. Let's make sure these two labels align, let's say on the bottom. So now they're aligned there. Um, let's have these two align on the left. And maybe do this here. Let's shrink our real estate a little bit. Drag this here. And now we have that. And you can also turn on the grid if you want um, to see where it's gonna snap to because we have snap to grid open on. But uh, I'll just turn that off. And now we have the general layout of everything that we want. And if you click this little run button, you first need to save your app. So I'll just call it signal combiner v1. Da -da -da. It saves. And any second now, it should open up. And you see your lovely little app here. And you can put in, if you try to put in letters into a field that must be numeric, it will tell you, hey, you're doing something wrong. They can put in numbers here. You can select options, press buttons, but nothing actually happens naturally. So that's working. So first, let's go ahead and change what the names of our things are first. So if you click uh, any of the components, you can see in the inspector branch right here on the right, major things about them you might want to change. So we have the title here. So I guess we can call this plot window. And on X, we have the labels for it. So we can call this time and seconds, let's say. And we can call this amplitude, um, let's say volts, whatever. And it changes accordingly on our plot. And if you want to change what font you're using, you can pick from any of your system fonts. But let's just stick with the base of Helvetica. It, um, always nice to have everything bolted a little. And actually, just to not have this little disconnect between them, let's move it down a little. All right, that should be good. And you have multiple different options on uh, how you want uh, your plot window to be. So if you want it to be visible or not, rulers, guiders, anything normal in MATLAB that you can do with a plot window, you can do it here as well. So now let's go over to this label and change what it says. So this is gonna be signal one. Now that's signal one. Let's do the same thing for this one. Signal two. This added field here. Now because this is a numeric field, we get some extra options, options besides the label. So let's say this first one is DC offset and faults. And the default value is gonna be zero, that's fine. But you can also specify limits to it. So right now the limits are negative infinity to infinity, which is fine. DC offsets can be positive or negative, but if you wanted to, you could change what they are. In fact, you can set the min and max if you click this little button right here. And yeah, lower element inclusive. You can change the font if you want, but let's leave it as default. Next one, we're gonna have this be the amplitude. Now, generally amplitudes are positive. So let's say this goes from zero to infinity. So now we have our minimum zero, our maximum infinity. Default is just zero. And then over here in edit three, let's have this be our frequency. Frequency. And generally, I don't think there exists such a thing as a negative frequency. So this will also be from zero to infinity. And next one will be our noise. And this will also be in volts. And our noise can be positive or negative. So just add that on there. And then let's quickly just do the exact same thing here. Now, if you noticed, 
um, we can sort of leverage some laziness here. Instead of going and editing each one of these, because they're the exact same as these, what we can do is just copy all of these, delete them, copy all of these, copy, paste, drag them here, align them, and you save yourself some work. Now, I want to, yeah. There you go, that's better. There you go. So now that we have this set up, let's go over here to the drop down menu. So um, let's call this select, I guess. And if you click here on option and uh, the main branch here, you can see items here. So what do you want to call each item? So let's just have three items. Let's have them be add, subtract, modulate. Add, subtract, modulate. And then we have our last one here, which is signal duration, I believe. Signal duration, this will be in seconds. And we have our little button down here. Let's rename this to plot. All right. So now if we run this, There's another little app, and if you click here on select, you can see add, subtract, modulate, and naturally, still nothing actually happens because we haven't programmed anything. But we've at least designed the look of it, and um, naturally, you can do many different things, change colors, font styles, all that. That's more advanced stuff. Um, before I continue, any questions? Nothing. All right, so let's go ahead and start doing the code. So as strange as it might sound, the coding for this is dreadfully simple because all, because you have to imagine it, the code only works if you interact with something here. So you'll put in your different little uh, values for DC offset, amplitude, frequency, noise, and such and such and click, uh, select where you add, subtract, or modulate, how long your signal should be, and then you just click plot. So really, everything happens when you click plot. So everything we want to program should be inside of this plot button. So that means the, call, the callback function you want to make is inside of here. And now if you go here to plot function, uh, plot button push, everything you want to program should be inside of here. Now, how, do you actually program this? You need to grab values that are stored in these little boxes. So if you take a look over here on the right side, you see here in this component browser, you have this parent figure called app.uf figure. That's your main app. And every one of these children is something that is inside of your app. This app.ui axis, that's your plot window. App.signal1 label, that's the signal1, that label. This plot button, app dot plot button, is this thing down here, and so on and so forth for each of the little things you have here, and you can access any number of uh, properties relating to each of these components to grab their information from. And if you don't know what information you can grab, you can always just look at the documentation. So, for example, let's just say I have no idea how to grab the DC offset value that I type in here. What would be the command for that? Right click, help on selection. This opens up the MATLAB documentation. Oh, numeric edit field properties. Oh, uh, the value for it. It can take any value you want. And all of these little uh, properties here are things you can tell it. So if you want to change the font name, font size, all you have to do is um, if the name of it is EF, then ef.value would be 20. In our case, this component is called app.dc offset v edit field. So for us, it would be app.dc v edit field dot value. And that value is going to be whatever this is. So 
for us, that means if I go over here and I just type in, uh, let's say we want to grab the frequency first. Let's call it freak one. Let's go to app dot. And this is the part where MATLAB sort of tries to fill in the blank for you. So if I just start typing in app dot, it'll say, okay, what can you theoretically put here that you might want to put? So it says, oh, do you want to put the amplitude stuff? Do you want to put the noise, whatever? And in this case, we want the frequency. Okay, which frequency do you want to do? The first one, the label. So let's just do the first one. So this is the frequency edit field, which is this one, which is this guy right here. And what do we want from it? Dot. And then oops, that showed up again. E. Do you want the background color? Do you want to know uh, what happens when it's deleted? Do you want to change the font name perhaps? No, 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 we just want the value. Just give me that value that's showing. And just to check if this is gonna work or not, we can type display free one and run our little app. And if I type something in here, let's say this, and I press plot, naturally nothing shows up in the plot window, but if I go over here to MATLAB 5154, so by clicking that button, we ran the second part of the code, which said, display whatever you put here. So we know that the code at least is working. And now, uh, in a similar fashion, you can grab all of the values here and then just start saving them to variables and then plot as you would normally in MATLAB. So let's go ahead and do that. So first let's figure out the timing stuff. So T, let's say for our signal duration. So we have app dot, um, no duration edit field. Uh, here's another trick you can do. You can just grab this thing here, place it right here, dot val, boom. You don't even need to type it out. So this is more math stuff. So uh, we want to plot across from zero to however long this is. So you want to sample points in between. So let's say our frequency, our uh, sampling frequency that we're going to plot against is, let's say, 50 times whatever the frequency that the person puts, just so we can get a nice graph out of this. And let's say TS1 is equal to 1 over this value. And the vector we're going to plot over goes from 0 with a spacing of TS1 going all the way to however long they want the signal to be. So this is all just time related plotting stuff. And I see there's a comment or a chat thingy. Yes, no, we have a question and it is, uh, how did you get the value of the frequency? How did I get the value for it? Yes. Ah, so it really depends on the user. So the way it's currently set up, the value for the frequency is whatever you put inside this box here. Right now it's zero. So if I just click plot right now, and I go over to MATLAB. Oh, did I get rid of the, I got rid of the display thing. Display freak one. Run this again. Da, 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 da. Plot, MATLAB. You can see the zero show up here. So the value for the frequency is whatever you want it to be really. So yeah, it's whatever you put in this box right here. So this is all the time related stuff. Um, next thing, let's go ahead and grab all the values that are inside of these boxes. So let's just make a little comment and say this is signal one info. So we have DC one, it's gonna be app dot uh, DC alpha offset field one uh, value. Uh, amp one app dot amplitude value edit field dot value, and then you can do the same thing for the noise app dot noise edit field one dot value, 
and the same thing for ah. So this really is the amount of noise amplitude you want to give, but we still need to make the noise based off whatever value you put here. So I'm going to make a little gummy bear go right here, call it N1. And if you remember back to your MATLAB coding days, if you want to make uh, random uh, numbers in MATLAB that are normally distributed, you can use the rand n function. So let's just use that. So we have SS NS1, which is our amplitude. We're going to use the rand n function, normally distributed random numbers. And we want this to be from zero, from a length of however long our signal is. So we have that done. And now everything we need to actually make our signal should be here. So let's say this is signal one. And if you go back to the formula, uh, PowerPoint, where are you? Oop. So we need A times cosine two pi, our frequency, our time vector, plus whatever noise we want to add, plus our DC offset. So, dupe. All right. So, in our case, it's amp one times cosine two times pi times freak one times t plus our n one plus our dc one. And if you don't see any errors or anything major here, this should be fine. And now that we have this, we just need to plot it. So before we do the second part of the signal, let's just make sure that this plots nicely. So if you want to plot, you can still use the normal plotting commands. The major difference here is the first uh, thing you put in the plot command is not your X and Y data. For App Designer, it's what axis it should be plotting on. In our case, it's the app.ui axis. So app.ui axis. And now you plot your uh, t, which is our x, and then our signal 1. And then let's say this is blue. And that should do it. Now, one second here. Repetition code. Let me quickly check something. Right. One second. Go back into here. All right. So now, usually um, the default values that are given are a bunch of zeros, but Generally, there should be a better value that you can give these things. So let's say the DC offset, they could both be zero. Let's start off our amplitude. Instead of starting it at zero, let's start off at five. Um, let's start off our second one at 10. This one will be six hertz. And this would be, let's say double that, 12. And we can also change this, put the units don't forget your units. And if I run this now, and we click plot, it, you can see here we have nothing that's plotted because our signal duration was zero seconds. But if I say one, now we have our little plot. And I just realized that I should have put a um, slider here instead of a drop down menu. So let's go ahead and change that. So instead of putting a fill in the blank uh, numeric field here, let's switch this up for a slider. That's what I wanted. Noise. And this can take values from zero to let's say five. And All right, and let's quickly change our code again. 
So the noise now comes from the slider edit field. So I'll just grab this, put that here. Slider, 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 slider. Right. And now if we run our code, if I plot it like, ah, let's say the default is one second. No such thing as negative time as far as we're concerned. Now if we plot, and if I say let's add one volt of noise to it, it's like that. Two volts of noise, three, full on five volts, and you get this. So there's that. And an interesting thing you can do is, what if you want to see what happens as you're slowly changing this without having to go ahead and click this plot button over and over and over again? That just involves doing a callback function again. But now instead of the callback function being on the button, it's whenever this is changed. So if I right-click this, and you can now see here, um, if you click the slider, say add value changing callback. And you can see here, this, uh, this will run as the value for that slider changes. So as the value for that slider changes, you can have it update the plot. And if you want it to update the plot, you just say plot, grab our plotting function, paste it right there. So now if we run it, and we do a normal plot, it shows up like this, but now, uh, right, I need to grab all this from it. So just to make my life easier, I'll just grab all this. Paste it here. Run this again. Now, as I change this, the plot updates accordingly. Straightforward enough. Before I continue, any questions? Yes, we have one question. Uh, someone asked where are they going to use this for at least FIU classes? And I, I remember they use this for BM instrumentation. We yeah. have to make a thermometer. And we use a GUI so we can read the temperature of the thermometer when we build a circuit. So you're going to build a circuit, you're going to use a thermo, thermo resistor. And from that information, use LED lights, okay, to signal whether it's within a good range or an abnormal range. And then put that in a GUI. Yeah. Um, so naturally, you can connect with Arduinos and everything. Everything you could normally do in my lab, you can turn it into a GUI of some kind. So you can use it in medical instrumentation. You um, if you take, uh, what's it called, BME Optics with God of Arty, um, depending on the project you have, you might have to design an app for it, or you could design an app for it. If you're in biomaterials, I think there's one project that Dr. Christie might give to a specific group that involves making GUIs. Um, I don't know if BME 2740 has an app building thing. Maybe they've updated their syllabus, but there are parts of that course where building an app would make uh, things easier, especially when you get around to doing either the Neurovas, uh, doing the Hodgkin-Huxley model or heart model. And depending on where your senior design project is, it might be preferred if you make a GUI of some kind, because oftentimes your sponsors don't want to deal with fiddly code. They just want to click buttons and see things work. All right. I have, I have one question. Ask away. Um, so the last thing you did was you moved everything from the plot push button to the to the noise slider button so that it would just be a, updated every time that you change the noise. Yes. Now, granted, uh, the way I did it is probably not the cleanest way to do it coding wise, but it's a dirty fix for it. Yeah, and it works. So now, if you took the whole code from the push button. Would you, would it still work? Oh, I wonder. Um, what do you mean? Like maybe if you, if you removed, um, 
everything from the push button since the slider is still being um, moved. Yeah, so if I uh, highlighted all this and just made a giant comment, essentially removing the functionality, right? and I ran the code, right? now the plot button doesn't work because the plot button only does whatever is inside this little chunk. And inside this chunk is just a bunch of comments. I see. And the slider will only work after you have done the plot function. Oh, so, so it does work. Remember, the, this noise slider is tied to this little uh, part of your code here. And it says value changing. So as this, as you move the slider here to control it, it runs this code here. It does not have anything to do with this plot button function up here. Right, I understand. Thank you. All right, no problem. So let me uncomment that. If there are no other questions, let's continue. So lazy me, I'm just gonna copy paste. All right, so next thing we're gonna need, I have like 30 different windows. All right, so let's finish off signal two. So we just did signal one, now we need to do signal two info. And because signal two uses almost the exact same code as signal one, I'm just gonna copy this, paste that here, and instead of one, make that a two. Now this is still referencing the first stuff, so we need to change this so it references the DC offset uh, v edit field for the second part. So this guy instead. And if you notice, the only difference between this DC offset uh, numeric field and this is that this one, the second one has an underscore two in it, so it auto named it. So for us, all that means is just need to put underscore two for these values. And that should do it. Underscore two, all right. Oh. One thing I almost forgot was this frequency for the second one. So freak two. Let's go to app dot frequency two dot value. All right, so we have our signal one, we have our signal two, and we want to plot both. So generally there are like 30 different ways you can plot things uh, in MATLAB. So one way is just doing uh, the axis x, y, color, and then you do comma, x, uh, y, so let's say signal two, the color, let's say red, and that would be it. So now if I ran this code, you can see we have uh, one signal in red, the other signal in blue, and just so both of them are on the same page, and we just copy paste into a noise slider as well. So now if I, ah, it looks like they're both referencing the same noise. Let me just quickly go ahead and change this. Yeah. So this is, should be N2 instead, not N1. And let's add a callback function for this as well. And it can be the exact same thing. So now if I run this code, default plot will be nice and simple. If I change the noise here, the blue one starts getting noisy. If I change this one, this one starts getting noisy. And that should do it. Three for two, one, all right. So now that we can plot everything, now we need to get around to doing the add, subtract, or modulate part. So up till now, does anybody have any questions? All right. So how are we going to do the drop-down menu part? So just like how all these little fields have 
their own specific uh, way to grab their information, so does this drop down menu. So if we right click here, help on selection, MATLAB documentation, you can see here, oh, um, if I do the drop down menu dot value, you can see the um, element specified inside of it. All right, so that means that um, at, if we do, where is this select button? App dot select drop down menu, drop down dot value, that will report back whether or not it's add, subtract, or modulate. So, um, huh, actually, let's add a third option here while we're at it. Let's say you don't want to add, subtract, or modulate, you just want nothing to happen here. So, the NA essentially. So, All right, so we have four possible options. Either you don't do anything, you add them together, you subtract them, or you modulate. And in programming, if you ever have a, a sort of branching decision tree here, you can use an if statement. So if the select option is equal to add, do this. Else, um, if it's subtract, do this. Or else, if it's uh, modulate, do this. If it's none of these, then do this. In our case, um, I'm gonna use what's called a switch case. So uh, the way a switch case works is you give it a array that has options and it switches between them based off what it sees. So in our case, we want to switch. So as Q1 is several groups of statements, so you want to switch app dot select dropdown dot value and If we run into the case of it saying add, what should it do? Well, if it runs into the case of add, then it should say, okay, make a vector called signal three. And signal three is just gonna be signal one plus signal two. But if you run to the case of subtract, then signal three is gonna be the case of signal one minus signal two. And if you run into the case of modulate, then signal three is just gonna be signal one dot multiply signal two. And what if it's none of these? What if you had picked the NA option? Otherwise, signal three is, well, we're not adding, subtracting, or modulating it. So let's just make a giant zero vector, just so MATLAB has something. And now we have signal three. And now that we have signal three, we can plot. So now we have T comma signal three. Oh, this should be signal three. And let's make this green. And now that we have three different things, it might be easier if we have a legend for it. So legend, now same as plot, you have to uh, give it uh, the axis it's gonna be on. So app, for us, it's app.ui axis. And we have signal one. The second thing we're plotting is signal two. The third thing we're plotting is signal three. All right. And just so the sliders are the same. them in here as well and assuming I didn't make a mistake it should work so right now it's gonna plot the sit for a signal plot the second signal and also plot what happens when you add them together so we have signal one two and three one this is blue one two is the red one and because we're adding them together we get a higher amplitude green and if I did subtract and set and click plot, now we get the inverted because it's subtracted. If we modulate, now it just multiplied both of them together. Mm -hmm. All right. And if we add noise, all right. So it seems to be working as expected. On the signal one, 
All right, it appears to be changing the red one as well. Might be an issue with slider N1, slider. Ah, this is N1. This first N2. I don't know. I can't figure it out right now. Anyhow, so that is the gist of the app. Any questions before I continue? No. Oh, yes. I have a question. Oh, continue. All right. So. I have a question, Asad. Ask away. Um, the reason you included the otherwise uh, code was, uh -huh. for, was for the not apply uh, option, right? Yeah, and generally as a sort of fail safe, like in case somebody put something weird in one of the other options, what does okay. MATLAB do otherwise? Okay. Thanks. All right. So with that, there's only one thing left, and that is exporting. So you have your app design, and you're ready to start sharing it with the world. How do you do it? So the first way is just direct source code. So you just literally send them the app file that MATLAB has, and they can go ahead and see all the placements and the code and everything, which you might want to do if you're collaborating with someone. But if you just want to share them the functionality of your app, how do you do it? Well, in an app designer, you can do what's called packaging an app and have it output a MATLAB add-on that you can give to somebody. The other option is that you can compile it to an MLAB. So this would be uh, built a nice little compiled function that also can be installed in the MATLAB. And the last one is the exe file, which you can give to somebody who does not have MATLAB. They can just run it on their computer without having MATLAB. So I'm just go ahead and show you these. So here's your lovely little app. If you go here to designer, you can change app details. So you can say, okay, it's app uh, adds two signals together, whatever. Um, use for basic signal understanding. V1, and maybe you want to put like functions implemented, whatever you want to put, whatever. And if you save this normally, you can save it as an MLAP, which is your source code essentially. But you can also save it, where is it? As an M file. And if you save it as an M file, what happens is that MATLAB grabs all of this that you've written here and turns it into a runnable script that looks like this. So this was just saved. And this has essentially all the code you need in a side of a single M file. And if I run this file, you have your exact same plot. And it works just the same, but outside of App Designer. So you could theoretically just give this to somebody and not the MLAP file, and it would work just as well. Now, the next thing is to sharing. So if you want to share it as a MATLAB app, things like this, and it runs you through how to go ahead and do this. So first MATLAB checks if there are any other files it needs to make this app, like any images or whatever for it. Um, it takes in the info you put in app details. It also tries to see, does it need any extra code packages to run with MATLAB? So like, let's say you were doing some image analysis, then you might need the image processing toolbox. It'll throw that into here on the dropdown, or maybe you're using something from the signal processing toolbox, maybe like the FFT transformers or something. In that case, it'll throw in the signal, process, the signal processing uh, add-on here. Uh, let's say this is it. You pick which um, output folder to save it to. Click package. It packages it. Open the output folder. And you can see here, you have this little app installer called Signal Combiner V1. And if you go over to your MATLAB, let me close this. You can see here, what we just did, it's an app installer. And if you right click here, 
you can install this. So if I click install, it'll install it to your My Apps. It'll say app installed. If you go down to this drop down, you'll see all these fancy, uh, pretty apps that MyLab has designed, and you'll see your great masterpiece here in My Apps. Um, function is in there. Oh, so you can't really run the folder. You can't run the program in the same folder it was previously made in. Uh, it's like a dependency issue, so just jump into any other folder and then run it. Ta da! And you have the little app. Now, I'm just going to uninstall this. Don't want to look at it. So now, that's two ways I just showed you. Uh, I have so many things open. Close that. App Designer. All right. So now you can also share it as a web app. Um, this is a bit more involved, but the gist of it is you can compile your uh, code to be uh, an executable JavaScript file that you just literally host on a server, and then you can run the GUI on a website. Which um, Dr. Sukius, I believe, has one on his that I helped him make. Might still be there. Anyhow, that's one way. But that involves setting up servers and such. So I'm not. I'm going to skip over that for now. Um, the last one is the standalone desktop app. So you can create a standalone desktop application using MATLAB compiler, and this is the one that you can use and share with somebody who doesn't have MATLAB. So if you click this. General information about it. Um, it makes a readme function, a splash page. Um, ah, so because this is built inside MATLAB, the person who gets it might not have MATLAB. So you can say the runtime download that they will need to install. Um, they, they can get it here, and this would be free for them. And if you're happy with all of this, you can also set up a custom little icon if you have one. I don't. Oh, installation notes if you have them. You can click package. It creates the binaries and everything. Give it a second. Or the icon will put your your face on it. <laughs> I, I think that would uh, prevent people from wanting to open the app. You'll see my face there judging them. All right, so it's done. And if you go over to the folder where it's saved, you can see the signal combiner, V1, whatever. And you see three different folders, for redistribution, for redistribution files only, and for testing. For redistribution has a single thing. It's the my app installer underscore web, which you named. And inside of this single file is the installer for your app. So you can give this to somebody. And even if you don't have MATLAB, this will install everything they need to run your program and the program itself into your computer as if it was an actual application. The next thing is the redistribution files. So this has all the things that make your application the application it is. So the splash screen, which would be your icon, the actual app, and then the readme. So by default, the readme would have any dependencies that are required, any extra information you told MATLAB to put in here. Uh, you can customize this to however you see fit, but this is the default. And then you have your natural app. And if I ran this app, you have your splash screen. Ta -da. And you have your app open up. and it plots everything. And this is running outside of MATLAB. So it's not actually running inside of MATLAB. This is a separate, a completely separate executable. So if we go to my tax manager right here, yeah, so you can see here, you have one MATLAB thing down here. So this MATLAB thing here, is the MATLAB that I was doing all my app designer stuff in. This MATLAB thing that opened up is the actual app. You can tell because it's much smaller than everything else. 
So it's completely outside of the normal map. Now, you also have the testing version. Now the testing version um, is basically for debugging purposes. So it, if this thing runs into errors, when you run it, then um, it's gonna like start outputting files here, but this is really just for debugging purposes, not really stuff that matters for most people. Let's see if it opens up. Ta -da. It's up here. Okay, give it a second, and it plots. Perfect, all right. And the whole idea is you're supposed to give this to somebody, they install it, they have MATLAB runtime installed on their computer, then it should just work. If they don't, then it, um, the, this application will install the runtime environment for MATLAB, so all the little extra files it needs to run the program, and then they can run your program. All right. And with that, I think that's everything. Um, Thank you. Questions? Um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, ask, what would be some general applications for GUIs and BME? I know we mentioned the thermometers for medical instrumentation and also the hodgkin Huxley model for modeling neuron activity. Mm -hmm. What would be some other ones that, that would cover, what we would cover generally? So, um, I guess the easiest example I can give is maybe like a um, research lab example. So let's say you're working in, I don't know, uh, uh, Dr. Cotavardi's lab or something, and you are dealing with hundreds and hundreds of optical images that you need to sort through, and you need to apply something or view them and edit something in them uh, specifically. Instead of writing a code and then changing parameters in your script that does it, you can create a GUI that lets you view all the images inside a specific folder, and maybe you run a special calculation on them and plot them all inside of one window. Or perhaps you have tons of signal data because you're in, uh, I don't know, uh, Dr. Hutchinson's lab and you're looking at stress strain stuff from one of his uh, devices and you need to process all that information, maybe it'll be easier if you make a little app that processes the loads of information and condenses it all into something easier to look at and uh, peruse through, rather than having to look through a bunch of text files and Excel sheets. Sounds good, thank you. Anyone else have any further questions? Thank you so much. Hello, Saad. <clears throat> How, um... How easy or is it possible to create a, a GUI on MATLAB and then possibly open it on your phone? So a mobile deployment of a GUI, I don't know if they've gotten there yet. Um, have they? Might as well check. It's been a while since I've seen the latest state of affairs. MATLAB GUI phone deployment. Sort of, not quite. Well, it's a work in progress. Right. It's a work in progress. The best option I have for you, um, instead of making the app in MATLAB, you can design your code for it if you want in MATLAB. And instead use, let's say you wanted to deploy a program into, a, let's say an Android. You can use MIT App Inventor. You can use MIT App Inventor, which lets you create an app for Androids and um, interface with it. And in fact, this is what I used when I was designing an app for BME Optics and God of Arty, uh, Dr. God of Arty's course. So it has like a drop down type of control logic block programming. Mm -hmm. And uh, depending on how you set this up, you can actually design your app from it. Nice, thank you. No problem. And what I used it for was I had MATLAB code that was controlling an Arduino and that had a Bluetooth connected to it. And the Bluetooth was sending, it, was sending 
information to my phone and this app was receiving it and then plotting on the phone. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And you said it was for optics? Yeah, actually. Uh, uh, so what, it was receiving like light signals? Uh, one second. Let me, let me, let me do some folder hunting for you. I have it here. I know I do. One second. So this was for a class project. We had to build a pulse oximeter. And basically you have your circuit, whatever, how your Arduino connected to a Bluetooth module. And the way it worked was in MIT App Inventor, you create your uh, control logic and the way it looks on the GUI. And then this uh, app reads the Bluetooth signal that your Arduino is spitting out, which has information from the pulse oximeter. And in this case, it was spitting out the percent oxygenation of the blood. Mm, nice. Now, did you create the code on MIT App Inventor or did you create it on MATLAB and then put it on MIT App Inventor? Oh, this was entirely done in MIT App Inventor. The code that's MATLAB part is the part that interfaces with the Arduino. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that was that. Gotcha. Thank you, Osad. No problem. Any other questions? Well, if there's no more further questions, I want to thank Asad once again for coming and presenting this topic. He's an expert, the local expert when it comes to my lab at our department. And I'm very proud of that <laughs> and hope to be Hope to be there someday. So hope you guys have a great day. Stay tuned for the next session. It's coming up in a couple of days and stay safe.